entry-level stuff that is assembled here, and some of it's American parts uh, and foreign components, but we assemble them here, we inspect them here, and of course we design them, and, uh, and then the, the custom shop line is the stuff that Pete is really, we brought him on board to do, uh, and that wood shop is really going to be, you know, for the stuff that is like a Steinway. If that makes any sense. You're gonna make something that's bigger than the stuff that's now. Well, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like full size right. cabinetry, right. intended almost intended for furniture stores. That sounds weird. But right now you're just doing the, the what I'll call the portables or the stuff that was on the assembly line downstairs. Or that stuff is the Victorphonic line. So that's our stuff that is available like nowish, basically. Right. Yeah. 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 Entry and entry and mid. We try to do everything. We realize that there's really no competing with the lowest firm's offerings. In yeah. Words, you 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 shouldn't compete on the low end with China. No. But you can compete in the mid zone, um, and then you can blow them away in the high zone. And those are three speed. Yeah. Yeah, they are. No six teams yet. No six teams. Yeah. No, we haven't gotten into the transcriptions yet. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm so that's sorry. That, that's 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 good. And what, what are you pricing that roughly? I didn't look at the catalog. What are you pricing them at, roughly? Uh, the, which, the, which stand, the, the phonic line or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that. I was just going to ask. I'm, I'm recording it, so I'm trying to do an interview with you. Oh, okay. But I, I tried to do too, so I know. Okay. We can jump in at the same time. No. Uh, All right. Well, uh, I mean, that, that's anywhere from 99 to 400 bucks. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm just trying yeah. to get a ballpark. Yeah. And the, Thanks, Grant. The goal really is what we're doing is we're finding musicians. We're, we're, we're not just, we don't want to be an electronics company. Right. That is the furthest thing that we want yeah. to do. What we want to be able to do is to utilize, is to utilize musicians and their followings. Right. We want to invest in the musicians. And then we want to return all that they're driving, their sales for their records, and also the, the sales of home audio products back to the artists. So we're paying them basically what would amount to a sales royalty on, right. on the hardware. So like, for example, RCA Victor, Elvis Presley sold a lot of Drop 45 players for RCA right. Victor, but there would be no way of telling no. how many RCA Victor 45 players Elvis Presley helped sell, because right. the influence is untold. In the modern era, we can really pretty much pinpoint which artists are driving those sales and make sure that they get paid too. Yep. Because so you're about paying artists a, a percentage of, of the hardware. The hardware. Yeah. That's, that's part of the contract or that's that is part of the contract. Wow. Yeah. We're paying them ten percent at least uh, on every single product they're helping drive. And that's not the records. They're getting maybe fifty, I think, on that. Right. They're getting a standard royalty on that. But to give them anything in the hardware is kind of unprecedented. And we think that yeah. while that's not something that a normal company would do. Um, we think that investing in artists means that people right. want to invest in us. And so, um, it, it also, you know, by, by giving artists a platform, uh, right. a really great recording studio, right. uh, to be able to come, cutting out all the costs for them, being able to press their records, right. being able to fulfill those, um, and giving them an income stream too. So maybe some artists will only make $200 in a month period. But maybe they'll make two grand. Maybe they'll make five, depending on what you know they're driving, and depending on, especially when when the American all American line gets rolling. Right. And you're looking at products that are more like between six hundred and three thousand dollars. How how do you see the artists as driving those sales of those devices? Because the idea is, it's funny because a lot of people have completely lost touch with the fact that these industries started together. The hardware and the software of music were always tight and without hardware software kind of ceases to exist in many ways I mean even if that hardware is just headphones that you're streaming from um, sorry it's okay sorry I'll the ability it. the ability to um, the ability to create wealth within the music industry by cross marketing our audio home audio products right. with the actual music. So for example, you know, once upon a time, I think I think it might be considered selling out.
to some artists to to promote, you know, a pair of headphones or a turntable or whatever it is. In this day and age, nobody's making any money. So we need to find a way to keep new artists making music and not starving to death because of it. And I, you know, if there's any human that understands that very intimately, yeah. I feel like I do. Oh yeah. Because I have, you know, I've been part of it my whole life. Right. And I realize that we have a rare opportunity to take a brand and to take a legacy and really give a chunk of it back to music and create a sustaining ecosystem. Yeah. Because right now, a company like Sony, they're a manufacturer, right? Right. When they, when they release a reissue of a, uh, you know, for example, a box set of something from Sony Music, and they make 10 times the profit on some back catalog item, that profit comes into the company and it goes straight into software. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't get reinvested in the no. newest, coolest band. Once upon a time, we really, the music yeah. industry yeah. used to invest in artists. Well, it's like how the Beatles invented medical imaging, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which is exactly. a crazy story. It's yeah. a great story. Yeah. And, and in yeah. fact, uh, uh, speaking of the Beatles, uh, I was talking to, uh, I was about to say Dave Mason, Nick Mason. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he, he said, he has this line that he uses quite a bit, and he said, you know what, I, uh, we, they, he said, Pink Floyd, they let us make three albums. And he said, must have been that Sgt. Pepper money. And you realize, oh my god, that's true. Every major album that we've ever known has yeah. come from a big corporate monolith. Mm -hmm. Even if it came from very yeah. good artists, it still had to have an infrastructure. And artists are missing that infrastructure. So, to be able to have a profit base to say, hey, listen, yeah. we believe in your work, we believe in how hard you work, right. and we want to go in on this project with you. Sure. We're going to make sure you're not going to lose on the recording. We're going to make sure you don't have to spend on your vinyl. But we want you to help promote yeah. this brand. That's a that's a big deal to us. What? Who's your A&R guy? Or well, is at it the moment, you? I guess everybody is. Oh, okay. At the moment, we don't have a, you know, I think the problem is you're really going to be structuring this thing totally differently than, than the last 30 years of record labels. Right. Because you've got that hardware interlacing component. But I meant somebody, somebody's building the stuff downstairs, designing it, working yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Somebody's deciding what kind of music you're going to record. Yeah. And you're sort of that as president, I guess. But At the moment, I'm doing more than I should be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I won't always do that. I'm, ha I'm going to be happy to not. But is there somebody now that you have on board that's deciding what's going to be Basically recorded? Me. People what's bring me recorded? people and then we go, okay, that's cool. But, but that's going to that's gonna step up quite yeah. a bit. Especially as what's we start to, we have to, really, we have to really reshape how artists are going to interact with their contract. Right. You know, because we want truly to be able to be the company that is the front catalog company. Right. You know, we really care about the idea that, that we're able to invest in a new artist to make the new music that isn't being yeah. made and at, you're, at the rate that we'd like. You have pressing machines down there, so you're yeah. pressing the yeah. vinyl yeah. 78s, we I guess. Two, yeah. And we do, well, we don't do 78s. We don't do 78s yet. What are they? They're 33s? 33s. Okay. Uh, we can do a 78 if it's cut at 78. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just one second, one second. I'm right. I didn't mean that. Columbia too? No. 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 Although uh, I, I like Columbia. Right. Um, well. But you no. have RCA Camden, right? I'm a Victor guy. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are the other brands you purchased as well?
won't make that the quality of trackers, and it's in Connecticut County. So that's really what wound up happening, is that because we felt rejected from the city by a lot of the politics down there, um, we, you know, we immediately went, Have you ever met him? Of course, yeah. He's, he's the board of advisors. Oh, has he been here? 
Not here. He was at Building 2. Right. Um, we brought him there, and we did a bunch of media with him, which we haven't really released yet. We released a little bit of it. Yeah. He's the coolest guy ever. That's the grandson of so the he's the, a, this guy a meal. The yeah. grandson of the inventor of the disc breaker, who's yeah. the co-founder of the right. What's his name? His name's Oliver Berliner. His name Berliner. is Oliver. Emil was his father. Yeah. yeah. What was yeah. his father's name? His grandfather's name was Emil. E-M-I-L. No E-M. He was the inventor of the disc breaker. Yeah. But yeah. this guy basically, you know, his father was... Same, same last name, Berliner? Berliner, yeah. Super cool. I yeah. Mean, he's 89. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I send him a birthday card. Oh, he's incredible. I'm going to send him this video. He's so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, Oliver. Yeah, okay. He is so 